Hey guys, what's going on? I thought I'd get some uh, Division gameplay footage uh, up on here. We're recording on the PC version. Uh, looks like the beta's been extended as of uh, today, the 31st. So I think they're giving us till February 2nd, I believe. So this is some PC Not gameplay. Done here. And we are playing essentially on ultra settings at 1080p. Oh, I got I will tell you right now, the controls work very well on PC. This isn't a, a, a poorly thought out port. Wow. The precision of shots like that versus using a controller are profound, in my opinion. Just gotta finish him off! Not sure how we actually shot that person, but hey, I'll go with it. Yeah, so gameplay is uh, it's okay. It's a little repetitive at times. Uh, I guess that's how it's going to be for a game like this. The beta is not going to contain a lot of content, and for the most part, it's it's a very small slice of I think what they have uh, planned overall. I have very high expectations for the final release. Um, this beta has shown a, a pretty good level of polish. Haven't had too many um, technical issues at all. It installed fine. I think we had one crash, maybe. I don't even remember when that was, or if I even recorded it. So I will put this to very but good use. The UI um, works. Are there tiny little things that could be done to maybe improve it? I'm it. sure that there are things that could be done. Um, but for the most part, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed um, by what has been put out. Now, a lot of folks are going to uh, are going to uh, point out to the fact that in 2013, when they first revealed the tr uh, the trailer for the Vision, um, it showed off a vertical slice of the game that was probably running on a super high end PC. And readings indicate an echo nearby. And you know, unfortunately, it. it it doesn't quite live up to what they first revealed. Um, again, how could it? Uh, the game has to work on a couple different platforms, not just the PC, and not just a high-end PC too. It has to uh, it has to work for several different models with uh, varying capabilities. So it's understandable that the final game is not going to look anywhere near that. Now, with that said, though, this version uh, of the beta that we're running right now on the PC, you know, this is not a bad-looking game by any you know stretch of the imagination. I think there's a lot of detail in things. As you can see here, uh, the character models are decent. They're animated pretty well. The weapons are, are very detailed. Uh, the sheer scope of accessories and and all that that were available here in the beta uh, are probably going to be expanded once the full game release. And you know, you have some pretty quality models here. Um, this is the essentially the 416. Uh, we have a scope, we have a PEC 15 on here, which is a laser, uh, infrared laser aiming module, essentially. Uh, I mean, this is, this is an incredible level of detail here. Console that I played on, I played on PS4 and Xbox One, and the character models on that, the weapon models on that, were just about the same. I think there's a little bit higher resolution here on the PC, some higher levels of detail, and, and you know what? That's just naturally for for this type of uh, for this type of platform. But again, the console versions, I, in my opinion, look uh, very good, and overall, I think visual things as 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 important as they are at creating a level of immersion in games like this. I think gameplay uh, overall trumps that, and I, li I like the gameplay. The game does suffer a little bit from what I have to call like an identity crisis. Identity crisis. Um, I, I do feel Careful. that at times Careful this now. game wants the player to be a bit more deliberate in things. I mean, the cover system here is, is pretty robust. Um, it's sticky. Meaning that um, you know you hold down the button. In this case, space is the uh, the cover button uh, here. And if I hold it down, it'll transition to this cover point here. And you'll see cover points pop up with a little bit of an overlay here. 
uh, a cover system like this seemingly points to a more methodical approach to uh, engaging in a gunfight. Um, there is no melee for the most part, except what for a very simple sort of uh, shove-back mechanic. Um, but other than that, there's no stealth takedowns. There's really not a lot of stealth in this game. See, again, when you see character model, when you see um, on the screen here, you see this line here. And if you don't see that line, let me see if I can bring up my... Uh... Oop, that's not what I wanted to do. Numpad 7, okay. Hold on. I'm trying to remember the hockey for this. So you see here on the screen, um, you see that line there drawn on the floor, and this is your pathing here. You know, I don't see a lot of games sort of go out of their way to make a visual cue like this for cover and where you can go and what points you can stick to. This changes the pacing, I think, of a game like this. Now, what I've seen, especially in the dark zone here, which is the PvP area, uh, which we're gonna we're gonna enter and play around in for a little bit, there's a lot of running and gunning. There's a lot of sprinting away, of of quick turns like this using a, a mouse or your controller. The cover system tends to sort of fall by the wayside, which is, in in my opinion, a little unfortunate. They went to the trouble of putting this into the game. And not a lot of players end up using it, especially in very hectic firefights. No, which makes a lot of sense. But if you're, I don't see a lot of planning go, uh, going forward in these engagements. You know, you basically your stumble life. onto your opponent, you initiate a gunfight, and you know what? Who has the ha whoever has the better gear, the faster reflexes to put you know rounds onto the target, generally wins the engagement. All right, so we are. We are rank 8 already. We don't have a lot of funds, though. Yeah. So let's play yeah, around in the dark zone for a little bit. I know it. Biohazard warning. Entering con Transmissions jammed. Proximity coverage so, only. This area of the game. Backup activated. System rebooted is essentially a, a player Morning, versus now all dog zone. area. You know, I didn't set up my emotes, so I think we need to figure out a way to bring that up in the game. Um, let's see. Key mapping. Oh, we do have auto run. That's interesting. Push to talk. Huh, we don't have any of these emotes, uh, unfortunately. Uh, we don't have them in here. Do the number keys have anything? Uh, four is a grenade. Does five or above have any? All right, doesn't look like uh, key five through zero have any function. So we're gonna go ahead and, and, and do that. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there, that player uh, went ahead and killed me. Despite the fact that I... Oh, did I lose a key? Interesting. That is interesting. Huh. Okay. Well, that sucks. Let's say we lost a Dark Zone key. That's alright. We'll, we'll get our revenge. He's marked road for a little bit. Probably gonna kill me, but that's okay. And we got the our stuff. Agent back. has been neutralized. Back. 
Now, there's been a lot of criticism of the of the dark cell. I I wish that there was more that uh, we could do to Exiting prevent the uh, contaminated area. You know, essentially player backstabbing. But I guess that's part of the gem of this game is that you could engage in in, in fighting other players at any time. Um, no one's really safe, per se. And, you know, that's okay with me. You know, it is what it is. Huh. Alright, I think I'm gonna go Ballistic Shield on this, so... Let me go ahead and show you that skill. How do we change our skills again? Crap. Um, I forgot the but menu buttons for this. Uh, that brings that up. That's our inventory button. Do we have a skill button? Oh, escape. Okay, whatever. So let's change our abilities here. Um, let's assign this. We don't want the grenade. Alright, cool. So a ballistic shield essentially is uh, your character will pop out a shield and you can use that for increased uh, damage resistance and increased weapon bonus damage. Uh, it's useful. Uh, unlike, you know, other games that this sort of resembles, it's not entirely a straight up shooter. There's, you know, there's reasons, you know, to outfit your character. It actually shows up in chat. Oh, there's a way of saying they need help. This guy just asked me. He needs help. Oh, sorry. I, I pushed the wrong key. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Sorry, dude. No, it is. I got a friend on group, and I wasn't sure whether or not everyone in the world can hear me. I guess, I guess you can. Um, it's proximity chat. I think it, it, it stops after a certain number of uh, distance. Gotcha. Praise man. Good luck, eh? Yeah, same to you. Take care. Bye-bye. So that was cool. Um, yeah, there's proximity chat in this game so that you can potentially diffuse uh, uh, situations where, uh, you know, maybe you accidentally hit somebody uh, when you don't intend to. See, when you group up with people, there's no friendly fire. But uh, agents that you encounter in this zone that are not affiliated with you in a group are essentially non-hostile agents. When you inflict, I believe, 20% uh, damage to them, or more, um, you essentially go into a rogue status. You lose your affiliation with the vision. And uh, essentially that will cause you to be hunted by other people, a bounty placed on your head, and you know, there's really not a lot of incentive to go rogue on anybody because it, you know, it's dangerous. So we got one enemy up there. I guess we'll do some gameplay up here. I know there was some guy up here. Where the enemy went. We'll have to go find him. They above us? They're above us. Okay, so how do we get up there? Let's figure out a way. Here we go. Nice. 
Nice. Awesome. You can toss it the other way. I think that most players are probably going to, I think, cooperate, or at, or at the very least, um, tr not engage each other whenever possible. Uh, I think that in this zone, um, just like in real life with you know any firearms, you, you have to know what where your target is and what's beyond your target. You know, it's one of the safety rules. And uh, if you don't want to inadvertently uh, go into a rogue status, you're going to have to make sure that if you're going to open fire, that um, you you take that safety rule into consideration. You may be thinking right now, hey, Kev, you know, it's a game, you know, you don't, there's nothing to take it that seriously, but you know what? I think that sometimes a game like a game like this makes you want to play in a, in a way that is more strategic, uh, that I think lends a, a greater sense of I don't know, control. And ultimately, since this is a role-playing game, I think that there's some role-playing, uh, fantastic role-playing opportunities here by treating your, your agent and your actions uh, a little bit more seriously. Now, there will be players that will probably go around wanting to kill other uh, other players in here to steal loot and to survive, you know, the manhunt that will be, you know, that will start uh, when they go rogue. And you know what? There's, there's really nothing wrong with that. Well, that's that's entirely up to you. So this is some of the map elements here. And where are we? We are here. Oh, there's a checkpoint here. We're at a vendor. Alright. Oh, looks like someone uh, went rogue somewhere. Now, the vision's going to launch on uh, March 8th, hopefully. The game's gone through some uh, significant delays. Uh, it was supposed to launch, I believe, in 2014, then they pushed it back to 2015, and essentially it kept on getting pushed back, and now we're looking at March 8th of 2016, uh, which is fine, which is great. Um, playing this beta and, and seeing the level of polish uh, that's, uh, that's here, uh, I have... Uh, I am pretty confident that March 8th is a realistic target date. Hopefully, um, with the feedback that they get from this... Oh, here we go. We have some here. Watch our... Uh, it's not pretty far away here. Now, there's probably going to be players hunting, and there are. Outstanding. Let's help these guys out. Sorry about the friendly fire. There we go. Does this open? No, it does not. Anyway, where was I saying? All oh, right. Um, feedback again. Hopefully, the game. Uh, will launch on time, and that they'll fix uh, any bugs. Uh, I believe a few days ago, Ubisoft had uh, made a, an announcement that they had um, fixed over 10,000 bugs based on feedback that they got from the Alpha playtest, which took place in December. Now, that Alpha playtest was only available on uh, the Xbox One platform. But, again, with the similarity in programming, it seems, between the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and, and the PC, uh, I can definitely see them being able to fix uh, issues on all three platforms with, with things that they learn from any one of them. So, that's a good thing. It sounds like Ubisoft is going to uh, devote a lot of time to making this uh, a polished product. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident. Oh, what is going on here? Oh, we have some more players again. I think that's the same guy that went rogue before, too, so... Interesting how that happened. Oh, those are NPCs. He's down. 
He's behind there. You're ganging up on me. He's down. Outstanding. S uh, sniper rifles. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I did want to talk about this a little bit. Sniper rifles are probably going to be very overpowered. Watch out, he's up there. Now, for those of you who don't know what's going on here, um, in the Dark Zone, um, you will get gear or loot um, that is contaminated, essentially, and it needs to be deconned in order for you to use it in the player versus environment portion of the game. So to do that, you have to call for extraction, and a helicopter Chopper comes, as you just heard, and this little yellow pack that's on the back of my character model here, you're going to attach that to a, uh, a guide rope that's going to drop from that helo. Um, this is like the tense part because these are um, predetermined areas, it appears, in the Dark Zone. And this is probably where most players are going to congregate. And this is probably where it's going to be the most dangerous for a lone player like myself right now. Or even for a, a fire team, uh, where people will come here and they'll hope to kill you um, and take your gear. Because uh, here's the thing, contaminated gear that you find in the Dark Zone um, can be dropped off your player model if you die. And, uh, it can essentially be stolen by other players, marauding players. Uh, so, if you played for a couple of hours and you got some pretty cool loot, and we're talking rare, maybe, uh, whatever their purple designation is, I think it's like, uh, ultra rare, for let's just use that term for now, or even, um, high-end or legendary items, uh, you could lose that. You're gonna have to go kill the player that killed you in order to uh, uh, get that stuff back. So now, once it's on the rope, you are good. So we're lucky that you know. Oh Jesus! What is going on? What is firing? Fifteen seconds. All right, let's get out of here. This might be a dead end. And it looks like a dead end. Alright, let's not go that way. Yeah, so there's going to be a, uh, obviously, a very tense element uh, of the game as far, as far as getting gear out. And according to developers, that's this is where the best gear is uh, going to be available. Uh, Hopefully we'll find a good balance of equipment, uh, gear, whatnot, uh, in the PvE environment, you know. I think that some people may choose not to engage in gameplay in the in the Dark Zone. You know, and that's well within what they want to do. I think about a third of the game is planned for the Dark Zone, with the remaining two-thirds uh, PvE. So, you know, if somebody wants to just simply play in the PvE environment, I, I think that they should be encouraged to do so if, if they choose to. I feel that like they shouldn't be penalized with, with lower end gear. You know, so maybe they'll change that. Warning. You are now entering yeah. a contaminated area. Now leaving the contaminated area. Right now in the beta, the uh, Dark Zone is uh, quite empty. Um, there's really not a lot to do other than grind for uh, gear by fighting respawning packs of uh, non-playable characters. Oh. Obviously, that's probably not what the developers intend for the final product, uh, at least I would hope. I would think that there'd be more to do in the Dark Zone other than fight other players. But you never know. Oh, this guy's hiding in there. Well, 
I don't feel like engaging him. Oh, what's up here? Hmm. There is a, a high level of verticality in this game, which is which is awesome in my opinion. I think that for a game that for for right now boasts almost zero loading screens, uh, I think that having verticality like this on top of that, you know, you know great job on Ubisoft's part uh, for, for pushing for this. Nope, guess we can't get up there. Guess we'll go down this way. Oh, we can't go down this way. This is Dark Zone 03. I think this is going to push us into a non-playable area, so let's not go down that way. You know, vaulting in this game is pretty smooth, I have to say. Oh. Okay. Let's go ahead and get some of these guys down. detail here. It feels like New York. Oh. My potato in. Oh good, we got a piece of that. Cool. There are these areas that apparently are contaminated and your character will put on some sort of mask filter. Now, the fact that there's a level of filter, you know, tends to uh, sort of point to the possibility that there will be higher level contamination zones that will require, I guess, some sort of extra gear. Oh yeah, sorry, I have to be able to go that way. That stinks. Uh, so, again, Right now in the beta, the max level cap is uh, level 8, and in the dark zone, which has its own completely separate rank, which is that purple number in the top right corner, um, is limited to 12 right now. Uh, so yeah, there's going to be higher level areas. Um, we're actually pretty low level, I guess, uh, for the beta. But, you know what, the beta is a taste. It's a simple sort of snippet of the game, just enough to whet your appetite and essentially keep you interested in this game for the next uh, a few weeks. We're a little over a month away, so... Warning. Readings indicate this area is contaminated. I believe someone told me this is the highest... This is the area with the highest level of enemies, so... There don't appear to be any threats, though. Interesting. That's a good thing. No threats found. Alright, cool. I heard the cleaners might be here. Hmm. The cleaners are a faction within the game. Um, they like to uh, burn everybody alive. Huh. 
Leaving contaminated area. Okay. Can't go out that way either, guys. Now, as far as uh, other things that are going to be division related, uh, it looks like the division will have a companion book of some type. Um, from what I've read on the Amazon description, there appears to be some sort of uh, survival guide. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, when we get it, because I did order it, um, it'll again give a little bit more area. detail as to the world that created the division. Now, this is a, a Tom Clancy. Uh, game essentially it's in that same vein as games like Splinter Cell or Ghost Recon or Rainbow Six so games like that are known for uh, a semi grounded in reality uh, type of universe you know uh, and while you're going to see technology used in the game in some fantastic ways a lot of that stuff is based on actual military prototypes that are going to be fielded uh, in the future most likely you know, we're talking augmented reality. This character here is supposedly wearing some sort of contact lens that um, is what this interface is supposed to signify. You know, the floating UI here. You know, this navigation line here is supposed to be something that your character can see because of this special contact lens. You know, which, you know, sounds fantastic. A little bit un unbelievable, but it's probably something that actually is in the works. Augmented reality, people have been playing around for it for a couple of years now uh, with various devices. Um, drone technology, uh, things like that. There was actually supposed to be a companion app to this game that allowed a, another connected player to fly a drone from a mobile device. Um, they've since scrapped plans for that, but again, the technology, especially with the with drones and other unmanned surveillance vehicles, uh, you know, it's it's very much grounded in reality. Uh, and me personally, I like games like this that give you a little bit of that, of more of that, de that type of detail. Plot lines involving, uh, you know, continuity of government, uh, I find extremely fascinating, uh, personally. Oh, some craziness here, I think. Oh, we have... There. Are we sniping? He's down. So I, I think the um, overall, my interest in the vision is. Probably about the same as uh, it was uh, before they released Morning. the beta. I, I was already very area. much interested in, in what they were going to do, what they were going to achieve um, with this particular with this particular game. The universe that they've created, I think, is probably going to be the best part about the division. It, it's it's something that they could easily add a ton of content create a ton of content for. I don't think that the Division is merely going to stop at this one particular game. They have said area. that they are going to have, uh, I believe, three expansions uh, over, uh, I guess, maybe a year, maybe several months, and that this stuff is supposed to... Oh, let me just get this fight. He's down. You know, so it's this, uh, so it sounds like that this game is going to be uh, around for a little while. They seem like they've planned support for it. Uh, there's been some comparisons that this game is very similar to um, another very popular online game uh, called Destiny. That's a console exclusive uh, shooter that has a lot of um, massive online uh, sort of characteristics. Um, you know raid content uh, where you're forced to team up with uh, people in order to uh, succeed where you really can't solo it uh so you know destiny was incredibly fun we played on the ps4 with uh, with some of our friends 
Uh, you know, I, I liked Destiny. It definitely wasn't a perfect game. There was a lot of hype for that as well. Um, and for the most part, it's gotten better over time. You know, I, I will admit that I did enjoy their most recent uh, expansion piece, which, you know, adds some pretty good changes to the game. Didn't make it perfect, but definitely made it a more fully fleshed out uh, piece of piece of gameplay. Uh, the, the problem, the continuing problem with Destiny is that it, it very much lacks a, a an understandable story. You know, they apparently they had a lot of stuff planned for that game, and uh, they had to cut it due to time constraints and, and other things. And focus more on the gameplay. Now, the gameplay in Destiny was solid. It's a great shooter. It's from Bungie. They know how to make games. Um, and you know, it was it was a solid game. Had its flaws, had some significant flaws, uh, but remains a very popular game that people still continue to play. New players are joining all the time, um, and really, the you know, other than the story being or lack thereof being criticism, um, I think people now that play the game are, are are looking for more content. They're 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 itching for additional expansion pieces. Activision famously said that, um, or Someone said, I think it was either Bungie or Activision, had said that Beginning item know, extraction. Division was being planned as a as a saga. It was supposed to be a decade of gaming. And uh, that it wouldn't be simply one game. Uh, you know, great. Got the package. Awesome. I, I hope that they can pull that off. I hope that what they have planned for down the road is, is going to be successful. It's going to be enjoyable. Uh, you know, I'll throw money at them if, if it looks good. Division already hands down, for me, personally, this is my, this is my opinion, um, it, it already succeeds where Destiny uh, failed. Cargo has been extracted. And that is a story. That is a, a compelling enough narrative to keep people invested in, in the game and to keep asking or, or keep wondering what what's next, you know. Uh, and like any large scale project, you know, you want to keep people. Oh, you want to keep people looking forward to more content. And I very much want to. Know. Focus on the game real quick. You got two on that level.
Okay. Now that gunfight's over. So yeah, back to what we were talking about. Um, I, I think the Division does already have um, a significant enough plot device um, that's pretty well thought out. Uh, I think that the setting here, the world they've created, the details that they've uh, put into this game are already beyond what uh, the destined that Destiny was able to uh, sort of bring to the table there. Uh, I don't think that I would be wrong in, in insinuating that Destiny really only saved itself because of its incredibly polished gameplay. Um, the gunplay was spot on. And again, you know, when you're talking about the makers of you know something like Halo, uh, to get gunplay right, you know, that's kind of to be expected. Now, Division, um, in comparison to something like Destiny, which has extremely polished gunplay, I think Division does have a little work um, cut out for itself in terms of its gunplay. Uh, it is by no means perfect. Um, it could probably use some improvement. Uh, I know a lot of people are probably going to complain about um, the bullet sponge aspect that is also present in Destiny. It's, it's very much present here. Um, because of the setting, which, again, grounds itself in a reality very much like ours, uh, very much like the contemporary world that we live in, people are going to expect firearms, especially, you know, military-grade firearms that we're, that our character is uh, packing here and has access to. Um, you would think that, you know, enemies would not be able to absorb you know, entire magazines worth of, of rounds. And, you know, if this game was, you know, super realistic, they wouldn't. It is a role-playing game. It's going to have a damage model. There's going to be uh, an RNG, you know, random number generator in the background here that's going to essentially uh, affect... Uh, how much damage you can output. You know, there's a very complex sort of stat system in here, or at least seemingly complex to me. And, you know, totally think that it would be a mistake to, to treat this solely as a shooter. Uh, Not much to look at. I guess we can call for extraction now, and uh, we'll try to get this gear out, and then we'll uh, probably end the video there. We'll get that uploaded tonight. We'll try to play some more tomorrow uh, for a few hours. Um, see if they've added any additional changes since they extended it. Um, probably not, though. We probably won't see anything too different. Bird in 
inbound on your position. The other thing is when you call for extractions, sometimes NPCs um, will spawn and try to attack the extraction site, uh, which adds another layer or dynamic to the game, which is, uh, you know, can make it very tense, especially if you are a lone player. I, I definitely do not recommend playing the dark zone areas of this game um, by yourself, like I'm doing right now. You know, it's the beta, I don't really care. There's no, uh, none of the character progression is going to carry over to the final product. Agent, I am inbound on your position. And that's typical of most uh, most game betas. You know, uh, it would be very unfair, I think, for anyone who didn't get access to the beta to suddenly find themselves at a severe disadvantage if players like us who are able to keep gear or, or keep stats, you know, have essentially that, that much of a head start simply because we pre-ordered the game. I don't know what these guys are intent, intent are. Cargo pickup underway. I think that's it for our little video presentation here. I gave you a little bit of PvE, a little Dark Zone stuff, a little bit of an overview and some of my thoughts uh, for the game. Uh, I hope that you get a little bit more of an insight now into um, what the vision is. Um, feel free to comment on this video. It will be uh, uploaded to YouTube. And Are we anywhere near where we're supposed to be? No, we are not. You know what, let's run back to uh, to this gate here. And we'll get a little bit more footage here that hopefully you will enjoy. But yeah, well, once it's uploaded on, on YouTube, feel free to comment on it, ask any questions of my experience here. Uh, I, I, again, have managed to play uh, on all three platforms now. PC, Xbox One, and PS4. I got a little time on, on every one of them. Uh, and for the most part have been pretty impressed with uh, everything that we've seen. I think that the groundwork again has been has been laid for a, a very good experience. Uh, I don't want to say incredible experience just yet because we don't really know how the whole story will flesh out. Uh, I've been hearing things, some articles that went up today on Sunday here, um, that uh, from I think one of the representatives of Ubisoft, uh, one of the developers I believe, uh, had said that they, you know they they've they've thought out a pretty complex uh, story. If there's going to be three uh, branches to the narrative, essentially one dealing with the virus, one dealing with uh, the. Um, the origin of the factions that you fight, um, because again, there are multiple factions in this game um, that serve as the enemies, the protagonists. For? And then I believe the third DLC will deal with actually rebuilding the city, rebuilding infrastructure, and, and things like that. So, so again, the groundwork is laid. Uh, I, I'm looking very much forward to seeing how they will flesh this out uh, into a truly uh, genre-defining game because I think there's, there's very much a possibility there to do that. Uh, I don't think that you know this amount of effort that they put into this game is not going to produce something uh, of quality. I hope everyone gives this game a, a fair shake when it comes out. 
you know, nobody needs to shoot anybody. One of the dark things of or one of the bad things about betas is that they tend to I'm not the enemy. Um, people tend to believe that they are indicative of the final product, despite all the all the disclaimers about this being not the final product, that things um, will change most likely based on the feedback from, from actual players. I do certainly hope that people who have played the beta this weekend and the last couple of days will send that feedback in, will let their voices be heard. With that said, I hope that anyone who does provide feedback also takes the time to actually think out um, their thoughts to back up any criticisms um, with with justifiable concerns and that their thoughts be be thought out in terms of the context of this game yeah uh, you know I don't uh, I, I hope that people aren't providing feedback that says, you know, hey, you know, the, the enemies are bullet sponges without realizing that, okay, there's a reason why that, that is. This game's pace is supposed to be slower than your than your average shooter. This is not Call of Duty. This is not Battlefield. This isn't, you know, any number of other well-known and, you know, for the most part, well-done uh, shooting games. You know, this is not merely a shooting game. It's going to be a variety of different genres sort of pasted together. And while that normally doesn't produce anything of anything good, at least based on what I've experienced when it comes to hodgepodge games, uh, I think that they have found a good mixture here of, of several different genres. And, you know, it works. So, you know, if you're going to put any criticisms up there, fine, awesome. That's well within anybody's right and anybody's opinion is as valid as the next person's. Just make well, sure that you back up your criticisms, you know, have an understanding of, uh, of what they're trying to accomplish here and, and frame your, your criticisms uh, with that context. Well, we're back at our base of operations uh, here at the old post office, I believe. And um, I think we'll end it here. So uh, again, I hope everyone enjoys this video. Feel free to comment, feel free to like. Um, this isn't exactly my day job, so again, it doesn't really matter to me how much traction it gets. This is really just something creative for me to do and, and, and get rid of some of that energy. Uh, I hope to see you all in Division on pretty much any platform. Uh, I don't know if I'll end up playing on all three platforms. I think that I will primarily play on PlayStation 4. That's what my copy of the game has been pre-ordered for. And I believe that most of the people I usually play with are probably going to play on PS4 as well. I would love for everyone to have a gaming rig uh, on PC. Uh, I think that this game is going to have pretty long legs here on, on PC. I definitely don't see this uh, faltering at all. I, I actually find the PC to PC version hey, of the beta away. to be the superior version uh, of the game. Uh, I don't know, just something about the way it handles and, and all that that is very satisfying to me. Oh, I'm not level eight. Hmm. I'm debating on staying up now and actually playing this, but what time is it now? Oh, it is very close to 0100, so that's a little bit later than I want to stay up. Maybe we'll, we'll tackle some of this first thing tomorrow. Alright guys, again, thank you for viewing. Leave those comments, leave anything that I can do better. Um, if you have any questions about uh, Destiny, in, uh, not Destiny, Division in particular, or at least a beta, and, and what I know about the project, um, feel free to ask those questions. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, yeah, so have a good night, and we'll see you around.